Hi everyone and welcome back to the Southerners Northern Garden. So I'm seeing a lot of questions regarding seed starting, what grow lights I need, what containers I can use, and I wanted to, sh to do a short video of what's worked for me and hopefully that will give you an idea that seed starting doesn't have to be expensive. It can be, but you don't need premium $300 grow lights to grow seedlings in your basement or your study or wherever you're putting your light. So I'm gonna put some pictures on the side of my seed starting setup and give you some explanation of where I've got these materials. So I'm a member of both Costco and Sam's Club and I highly recommend you go there to get some of your seed starting materials. So I purchased the six tier shelving unit from Sam's Club for around $90. Costco sells them as well. I do recommend the Sam's Club version because it comes with these plastic liners for the shelves um, to make it easy to set things on and also makes cleanup really easy. Uh, and then I purchased LED shop lights. They're around $30 a piece and they're linkable. So you can plug one shop light into another shop light and I have a total of five shop lights on a timer. You can purchase either a Wemo if you wanna be a little splurge a little bit or just purchase one of those $5 timers that you can set manually. I have used this system for two years. It did require quite a substantial investment up front. However, you can buy just one shop light if you're starting a little bit of seedlings uh, or if you don't wanna buy the shelving unit, you can buy a shop light and just have $30 invested and then hang it close to where your seedlings are going to be. These shop lights have worked great for me. I actually have my tiers at different heights so I can start them out smaller and as the seedlings grow, particularly tomatoes tend to get taller, uh, I move them to the other areas that have a greater height. Uh, one thing I also use, if you have a rural king in your area, you can also purchase them online. They have these huge bay uh, shop lights and I typically use those for seedlings who have outgrown the shelving unit or if I'm wintering something over in the, in the house. For example, I have a bay leaf tree that I keep outside during the spring and summer when the temperatures are not below freezing, but I bring that in the winter because it would not survive our cold temperatures here in Ohio. So the LED shop lights I have are 5500 Kelvin, which is perfect to grow seeds. You may not be able to get plants to bloom down there, but if you're trying to get away cheap and just get seedlings to grow, they have worked perfectly. I've had no problems getting seedlings to germinate or stretch. Um, that can be an issue if you're not using a good light source. These are plenty powerful enough and I highly recommend that route if you want a cheap option. As far as containers, this is where you can get really creative. So you can use yogurt cups. I see a lot of people use yogurt cups. Solo cups work well. So I use these the first year I started or you can buy the smaller ones. Um, these are The clear ones are great because you can see root development, which I really like. These are a bit big to start seeds in from the beginning, but it's certainly something to consider when potting up. You can buy small tin pans to start herbs and other items in that. I also like to save the containers for annuals I plant, so you'll see these often. They're the four inch containers from Proven Winners that I buy the annuals from, uh, and I just save them from year to year and plant them up as I need bigger space for my plants. Uh, if you need to have an area to bottom water your trays and you wanna go cheap, Ikea, which you can purchase online, has these shoe tray holders. Uh, they're about $3 a piece. I just go to Ikea and buy a bunch of them. They're great for bigger pots. They don't have a lot of stability. They're very flexible. Um, so if you're gonna be moving stuff around, you may consider something different. And also for my bigger plants, when I pot them up, uh, I go and buy busboy containers from Sam's Club. There you get about two of them for $15. Um, you can use them as potting trays, which is what I do, but they also hold two and a half quart containers by Proven Winners perfectly. So if you need to pot something up, like it holds six perfectly and they're easy to move around because they're very sturdy. Now, if you're looking to up your seed starting game and you've been doing it for a while, I highly recommend products from Bootstrap Farmer. Uh, the 10 by 20 trays are amazing. If you just want something to start seeds in, uh, they are stout. They're not going anywhere. These will last a lifetime. You can buy them from Amazon or directly from Bootstrap Farmer. They are a little more expensive, but I promise you'll have them forever. I have not had any problems with them and I highly recommend them. I'll be talking about some more Bootstrap Farmer products. Uh, this goes in their 10 by 20 tray. It holds their containers, which I really like. These are the items that I'm using to start most of my seeds now. So they fit perfectly in this container and then they fit in this. 
so I can fill this up with water, um, let my seedlings get some water, and then I can move them actually to a tray that's dry. So I have enough of these that I can move stuff around and have one extra at any given time. Bootstrap Farmer also has these containers, uh, which I use sometimes to store herbs. They fit perfectly in the 10 by 20 trays as well. Eight fit in there. They come in all different colors, or you can get black. Bootstrap Farmer also has this for starting small seedlings. Uh, it's not my favorite. It's very rigid and can be hard to get seedlings out of. But if you need something to start and on a very small scale, these work excellent as well. Now, if you're going to choose Bootstrap Farmer and invest in your seed starting materials because you're going to be doing this for a, quite a long time, they do have these great seed humidity domes to trap humidity and help your seeds germinate easier. I do love these. They have little vents on top so you can let in more or less air. Um, but if you're not going to use Bootstrap Farmer for your starting supplies, and that's perfectly fine, you can use an upside down um, container by Sterilite or something similar in that nature. Uh, you just want your seedlings to stay moist uh, but not sopping wet. As far as seed starting uh, markers, uh, these I recommend. I got them off Amazon. They are paper but they are coated in a plastic uh, that makes it easier so they don't rot. Some people use popsicle sticks. I do not recommend popsicle sticks. I used them my first year. Uh, they started to rot, cause mold, and attracted fungus gnats which is something no one wants to deal with. Now for some seedlings, you may need a heat mat. You can get a cheap one from Amazon. I believe they're 20 to $30. Uh, Vivo Sun, I think is the one I use. I don't need them for every seedlings. Peppers sometimes, but I could probably germinate them without them. So I don't think it's required, but if you want to try one, go ahead. Uh, since I do do seed growing in the basement, the basement stays a little cooler. So some of my seedlings do germinate a little slower and grow a little slower. So I'll use that heat mat, particularly on peppers or hard to germinate perennials and that seems to help. So in this video, I just wanted to give you an introduction to some seed starting options that are cheap um, and effective. You don't have to spend a bunch of money to start seeds. You can if you want to, trust me. Uh, but in the next coming videos, I'm going to be talking about the potting mix I use that I mix up myself, and I'm going to be planting some geraniums. I get my geraniums from Stoke Seeds. I grew them for the past two years. Uh, from Stokes. Stokes germinated amazingly. I had germination in two days last year and every one of the seeds germinated. So I highly rec recommend Stokes. Uh, this is the Maverick Salmon variety. Let's see if you can see that there. I'm also going to be growing Buried Treasure Strawberries from Proven Winners this year. Last year I bought the plants, but the plants are about $8 a piece because I can't find them locally and I have to have them shipped. So I bought both the pink, white, and red buried treasure and I'm really excited to grow those. They produce a ton and the berries are delicious. I'm going to stick these in the freezer um, that way they can germinate easier when that time comes. So stay tuned. I'll be starting seeds in a couple more weeks. It's still a bit early in Ohio to start some seeds but perennials Geraniums take a really long time to get going. They are slow to start. A lot of people recommend taking cuttings and rooting cuttings, but you gotta have a geranium alive to take a cutting. And in this time of winter, that's not gonna happen. And geraniums are also very expensive if you buy them individually. So typically every year I'll grow around 50 geraniums and one part of my garden bed up front is all geraniums. So that's one way I save money. You don't have to order these seeds. The first year I grew geraniums, I grew, um, them from a two dollar packet from the big box store and they were beautiful colors they were open pollinated i had some white with pink fringing uh, some dark reds pink i'll show pictures of some of the ones i got they were absolutely gorgeous but i wanted a consistent color palette for the past two years so last year i grew stokes maverick geraniums in a slightly different color they ended up being more red than i wanted so this year i'm choosing maverick salmon and i'm hoping that's a more apricot color that I will like. In closing, I'll say get out there, have fun, get you some seed starting containers, and join me in my seed growing. And remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Bye everyone.